And I'm back with more car basics. Siphoning gas out of a vehicle is one of the most common and uh, basic things that we're going to do with a car. And there's uh, we covered that in the last episode. The other most common thing that we're going to do to get a car running is to make sure that the battery is running. So if we look at this vehicle here, using the examine key, we already found out in the last episode that this car battery is draining and the tank is draining. So with a no good battery and a no good tank, this vehicle needs a lot of work. I'm not even gonna look at the rest of the car. If I examine this car to my right using the E key, I see this is a diesel vehicle that has a good intact tank, but it also has a no good battery. It's empty and it's draining. And this may be the reason that we can't uh, drive this car. But we haven't explored any other reasons that it may not drive. But that one right there is a deal breaker. There's no driving this car. But don't despair. It's a very simple matter to transfer a new battery to that vehicle. If we have one available. So I'm going to check this vehicle right here. And what do we have? We have a uh, vehicle with not a good vehicle tank. We, if we put gas in it, it's just going to run right back out. But the car battery is in good health, indicated by the health indicator, plus plus green green square. Uh, and that it has a total capacity of 3,000, because that's the kind of battery that it is. It's not large, it's not small, whatever. But anyway, it's got 19% charge, and it's not draining. So I want to take this good battery out of this bad vehicle. Now, by the way, later on in the series, we will look at how to swap out vehicle tanks which is another great way to get a car running, but it requires more skills and more tools and more raw materials than is appropriate for our tutorial at this time. But right now, batteries are easy to do. First, let's see if we can remove the battery from this vehicle. By the way, you can stand on any tile adjacent to the car and access any part of the car. So let me examine this vehicle. What I want to do is remove that battery. Here is a concept that I struggled with mightily when I first started playing Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, and I want to save you all that suffering and go straight to the fun and interesting things. Let's look at the top left-hand corner of the screen where we've got a very basic depiction of the vehicle, and using the number pad or arrow keys, let me verify that, I don't usually use the arrow keys, yeah, using the number pad or arrow keys, we can scroll over the various tiles that make up the vehicle. We can even scroll way off the vehicle, although there's no real point in doing that. So don't get lost out there. This is the trunk area, and it shows us the parts that make up the trunk. A vehicle is built from the ground up, basically. Everything is mounted to the frames. So you see it says frame, muffler, and trunk. The muffler and the trunk are mounted to the frame. Over here we've got a frame and a quarter panel. That's it. It's just the corner of the vehicle. Now here we have a frame, and into that frame is built a wheel hub assembly. And inside the wheel hub assembly is built the wheel. But there's also a vehicle tank here, mounted to the frame. And there's also a windshield. Now the windshield is above all of those other parts. So there's a sort of um, verticality to these parts. They don't all exist squashed into one space. They're built below, in the middle, and above one another. Just for your reference, I'm looking for the battery. Now here I have found it. So what are you going to have to do, and it's usually located in the front of the vehicle, but not always on the same tile. But in this case, as I scrolled around, I found where the battery lives. And so we have a healthy exterior frame, and to that frame is mounted the battery and alternator, and the engine, as well as a quarter panel. So we want to remove the battery. How do we do that? We hit the O key. When we hit the O key, it's going to give us the information that we need to know about whether or not we can do that uh, based on our skill set and our tool set. Now the required skills is mechanic zero. In other words, if you have no mechanical skill, you can do this. And this is one reason we're covering it early on in the tutorial. You don't need any skills to siphon uh, gas out of a vehicle. Any character can do it. And you don't need any skills to swap out or to, t to remove this battery. Uh, it takes no skills to do that either. But doing it will practice your mechanic skill. So that's important to note. 
So if your character has no mechanic skill at all, he can remove this battery and it will train his mechanic skill up toward Mechanics 1. It does require a tool with bolt turning of one or more. Now these items are highlighted in green because we meet the requirements. If you remember from the last episode, our tool with bolt turning of one or more is coming from, could be the pliers, uh, as well as the uh, multi-tool that we picked up, which has that tool quality. It's also going to require that we have at least two strength or a tool with lifting. So we do have at least two strengths, so we meet all the requirements. Now, I had trouble because I have changed the font on my screen to make it more readable for viewers. Uh, how do I scroll down and see more information? I see description, a battery for storing electrical power and discharging it into power electrical devices built into the... All right, so I finally discovered, I think it's right bracket, uh, right brace, or is it page down? Uh-oh. Well, maybe I've forgotten how to do this. Anyway, there is a way to scroll down that information screen. Um, oh, I'm very sorry. Well, I'll cover that in another tutorial. But anyway, you can scroll down the information in that screen. Mouse does not work. Anyway, we know that we have all the information that we really need, which is how much mechanic skill do we need and what tool do we need. So I'm just going to hit enter on this car, or uh, on that part, and almost instantly we've removed the battery. You see it's no longer listed as being mounted to the frame. So where did the bad battery go? Pretty much any car part we remove is going to land at our feet. No matter where we were standing in relation to the part or the vehicle, the part will arrive at our feet. Now we covered the drag key, that's backslash, and I'm going to haul this battery away from the car just so that it's over here somewhere. Alright, we now have a vehicle which has diesel in its good tank and it's not draining and it's got an engine and it's got all this stuff but it doesn't have a battery and it needs a battery to run. If we try to start this vehicle by hopping in and pressing shift 6, you hear the engine rapidly clicking. So that's a sign that it may not have enough battery power. All right, let's examine this vehicle here. And we can do the same routine on it. We want to pull the good battery out. So I'm going to highlight these squares until I find the battery. There it is. It's in good health and it has 573 of 3000 charge. I'm going to hit the O key. We have the same requirements here, so I'll hit enter which is going to remove the battery. I hit escape to get out of that screen and the battery lands at our feet. I'm just going, I could grab it and carry it, but it, usually these batteries are heavy. So I'm just going to hit backslash to haul everything here and drag it over to this vehicle. Now, once again, I think crafting radius is going to enter into this. I don't think that our car parts have to be directly adjacent to the vehicle. I'm going to test that by hauling it a few squares away. Now, I think as long as it's within six tiles, we can use it as an ingredient. So I'm going to examine this vehicle. And now we want to install the new battery. So I'm going to highlight the same square. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you can mount this battery on any square. Uh, but, you know, we could put it on the interior or whatever. The other battery came from this square, and I'm just going to put it back there for no reason. But anyway, the way to put the battery back in is to hit the I for install key which is listed at the top of the screen there under all of our options. And if I hit install, the options that we meet the requirements for are highlighted, and the rest are just all the other possibilities. This is a searchable menu, by the way, and you can use it to look at all the possibilities for what you might want to install in a car and what you might need to do that. So, like, we could uh, install an advanced reinforced solar panel, but we don't have Mechanics 6, it says, and we don't have an advanced reinforced solar panel, and so forth. We don't meet the requirements for any of these recipes, but it is a lot of fun to look through them all and think about what we want to do with our, our cars and trucks. But anyway, we could install aisle lights, it says, which would require a flashlight and a tool with screw driving of one or more and one strength. So that is an option, but what we want to do, we don't want to put aisle lights on the front of our vehicle. So here's car battery. Ah, it also requires a mechanical skill of zero, and I thought that it required mechanics one. That may have changed since 0.g, but I'm not absolutely certain of that. So don't take that to the bank and try to deposit it. 
But anyway, that's good to know. So um, we do not need any mechanical skill whatsoever to do the full swap. That's removal and installation. Excellent. All we need is that tool with bolt turning, which we're getting from our multi-tool. We've got to have a battery on hand, and we've got to have at least two strength in order to do this. Now notice that it says we do have a battery on hand. I'm going to escape out of this and remind ourselves that our car battery is all the way over here. So this means when you're setting up your garage to work on your vehicles, you don't have to worry about crowding a bunch of parts up against the vehicle. You don't have to have a shelf right next to the vehicle. What you can have is a line of shelves on the far wall of your garage or whatever, and they're all going to be your tools, your spare parts, your raw materials, your car parts, and so on. Let's say we had all these storage shelves over here with different categories of items related to working on cars. As long as they were within six tiles of our body, we can stand next to the car and do the work using all of those items. So it's just such a wonderful, wonderful system for crafting. So anyway, I'm going to highlight that square again. Or actually, we can double check what I was just saying about where we install the battery. Let's say we want to install the battery right behind the engine and not on the alternator square. I think it will still work, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to hit install, and we can install the car battery there. There are places we cannot install the car battery. I am pretty sure. Now, it depends on... We can probably install it there. Okay. You're going to find squares where there's a certain requirement, like you need a certain kind of frame, or that frame can't be full, or something like that, where you won't be able to install a part. And it will let you know that by not highlighting it. But let's say we want to install the battery behind the engine here on the uh, healthy frame. If I hit install, car battery is still an option. I'm going to hit install. And it happened almost instantly. We've now got a battery in there. If I examine the vehicle, it tells us we've got that 19% full car battery on the list of main parts. Engines, tanks, batteries, seats. So let's get in and see if we can start this vehicle. There we go. So we have successfully transferred batteries and we now have a running diesel vehicle. This required no skills and one tool. So it's not that difficult, folks. Not that difficult at all. Now I'm going to hit uh, Shift 6 again. It's worth knowing that under turn on headlights, turn on dome lights, turn on stereo, turn on space heater, and turn on cooler that these are going to drain battery power. And if we leave these things on and shut the vehicle off, the alternator is not going to continue to charge the battery and it's slowly going to drain. And I think it will give us a message that the battery is draining. So let's double check that. Let's say I want to turn on the headlights and then I forget that I've got the headlights on. I hit stop driving and now the engine's off. The headlights are still on. When I examine the vehicle, Okay, it doesn't give us the draining status, but it tells us that the batteries are losing 120 watts of power. Uh, it's losing 14.4% per hour, and in one hour, the battery will be empty. So this would be a horrible mistake for us to make. But by the way, you will find cars out in the wild, which the only thing actually wrong with them is that somebody left the headlights on. And you can shut them off without starting the vehicle. So if I walk up to the driver's seat and I hit the E to examine key and I examine the driver's seat, I can turn off the headlights without ever having to get in and actually start controlling the vehicle. The reason that we can take these actions when examining that square, I'm going to look at the vehicle again, is because if we look at the driver's seat, there's a unique tile here called controls. Can we see the controls from here? Let's see. Frame, roof, seat, belt, dashboard, more parts here. Uh, let me hit... Um, oh, there we go. And we're getting to scroll over there. How do we get to scroll over here? I want to list these parts. Uh, let's see. Well... No. Okay, I can scroll that menu with brace. I can scroll this menu with bracket. And as it turns out, I'm the one doing the tutorial series, and I don't know how to scroll the items on that square. But just rest assured that there are controls on that square. We can highlight the square with X and see the controls at the bottom of the list. 
now they're damaged. And if they become too damaged, they won't work at all. So be careful not to have a car accident and destroy your controls, in which case your car might be fine, but you'll have no way to control it. And that concludes my tutorial on swapping out batteries. I'll see you in the next one.